materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few other environmental stuff. All right. Recycling. All right. Well, that's what she does, isn't it? Right. Yeah, we were doing the Guys, recycling. No, no, we're going to start the meeting if you don't mind. Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, February 6, 2020 meeting of the Planning Board. Uh, first order of business, to review and approve minutes. We have minutes from October 3rd, 2019. Does anybody have any questions or comments or amendments that they would like to add to the minutes? No, sir. I move that we approve the October 3rd, 2019 minutes as written. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Some bills. Two bills here. Uh, for Graves Engineering Technical Peer Review and Field Engineering for 257 Main Street for $786.50. And Edgemere Crossing Second Site Plan Review, $1,522.50 for a total of $2,309.00. I, I move that we authorize the expenditures as uh, just read by the chair. Do I have a second? Yes. All in, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Going around, I have board member comments. Mr. Gordon, any comments? No, I have no comments to that. Mr. Jerry, no comments. Mr. Rodolikas, no comments this month, Mr. Jim. None, sir. All right. Our first hearing is a uh, new public meeting for the Community Preservation Act for a presentation. It's my understanding this is um, just a an, uh, informational. Um, Act that's likely going in front of uh, town meeting for adoption and how it might impact this board. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank that's you. Correct. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. uh, good evening. My name is Jason Molina. Uh, tonight I'm representing the Community Preservation Shrewsbury Ballot Committee, which was formed in uh, late last year. Um, the mission of the Ballot Committee is to propose that we adopt the Community Preservation Act in Shrewsbury. Um, I'm here before you because the, the uh, outcome of a Community Preservation Act adoption in the community would be to create a local commission that would also be, um, would your uh, board would have a member of that, uh, be on that, on that board as well. So uh, it is of interest for your board to hear what is being proposed because, I would, like I said, you would have a participation in that uh, commission. Okay, so to, to get started with the Community Preservation Act, I uh, just wanted to give you some background on what it is. Um, I know some of you may be very familiar with it. Um, there was an effort many years ago um, to talk about the CPA, um, so it has evolved over time, um, and we'll just do a little refresher. Okay, so Community Preservation Act, what, what is it? Um, it was enacted in 2000, and since then, 176 towns and cities have adopted it. Um, including our, our neighbors in Grafton, Northborough, and West Boylston. And what it does is it establishes dedicated funding for open space and recreation, historic preservation, and affordable housing. These categories, as you may already be aware of, are very hard to fund through an municipal budget because core town <coughs> services are the biggest driver of those budgets and, are, quite frankly, the most important pieces of the municipal budget, like education, our safety, you know, water, um, roads and bridges, et cetera, in our town. Uh, but that leaves with either little or no funding for other quality of life projects like the ones I mentioned, open space and recreation, affordable housing, and historic preservation. So the Community Preservation Act was really targeting those, those categories that, again, could not be funded um, under municipal budgets and that the communities across Massachusetts felt that it was very important to get funding uh, in some manner. And so in 2000, and many years leading up to that point, there was a groundswell of communities that said, hey, we got to find a way to make this happen, and that's why CPA was born. Um, CPA generates its funds through a local surcharge that's placed on property tax bills. And so the act allows up to a 3% surcharge. And later on in my, in my presentation, I'll go into what it is we're actually proposing adopting here in Shrewsbury. But again, the act can go up to 3%. Along with that surcharge at the local basis, there's also a state matching fund that would contribute into this pot of money that would be available for the funding those categories that I mentioned. So again, I'll cover that later on in the presentation, but I want to make sure that you know that there's a local surcharge plus the state funds that would come in to help us in this regard. 
And then the question is, well, why now? Um, quite frankly, we want to take advantage of the fact that there is a, a ballot question. There's, a, there's already going to be a state election. Um, and when a community raises a Community Preservation Act question on a ballot, it tends to have a much, much higher favorability of being enacted when it gets tied with the presidential election. So being that we're already in the season, um, it is very timely, and, um, and so we want to take advantage of that from our perspective, from the ballot committee's perspective. Um, there would be a uh, town meeting that have to be you know, involved in here as well to get it onto the ballot, so I'll cover that later on as well. So just have that for, from a timeline perspective. So what can CPA fund? Um, on screen right now is a simplified view of the, of the CPA funds. Uh, along the left-hand side are verbs which uh, are used in, in the language uh, of the legislation. So that is um, acquiring, creating, preserving, supporting, or rehabilitating, and, and restoration of the following categories. Again, open space and recreation, historic preservation, and affordable housing. And as you can see on the slide, most items are covered. Um, of course, you can't create historic preservation, right? That has to age <laughs> and be of, uh, of interest in the community that is a, as a historical item uh, and some caveats there. There is for reference, and I won't drain, the, I won't talk about that particularly, but in your reference packet, there is a slide as the legal ease <coughs> of what is actually allowable and some other uh, reg pieces of regulation in that regard. Any questions on this slide before I advance? Mm -hmm. All right, so with those categories, I wanted to present some examples of which we can be funding them. Again, these are just examples, not uh, exhaustive list. In the open space category in the top left, um, open, acquiring open space through Shrewsbury. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> um, Melanie McGee, who's uh, joining us, me here. She's also part of the uh, uh, five-member ballot committee, which has been formed. Welcome. Glad to see you. Thank you. Yes, sorry to be late. I, I wasn't exactly planned to be here uh, originally. Okay. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go no ahead. problem. Um, so that also, in addition to open space, uh, preserving more land that directly impacts the water supply. There's some folks in our town, obviously, that are very sensitive to the, to the water conditions in our town and want to see that we, that we take an active role in protecting the land that directly impacts our water supply. Um, so there's an opportunity to do that with CPA funds if that becomes an opportunity that the, that the that town wants to endeavor on. Um, also, preserving parcels in town from development. Again, there are some folks in our community that are uh, of interest to see um, more open space and less development. For those folks, here is an opportunity with funding for those needs. Again, any of these projects that I'm, gonna, I'm covering through right now, it really is uh, up to the commission that's created through this and for them to advance any project proposals. So uh, the, the question is really more about funding, right? Uh, adopting the Community Preservation Act so we can have the funding available to see some of those projects come to fruition. On the recreation side, um, creation of dog parks or creation of walking and bike trails or creating or rehabilitating our existing playgrounds. You know, some of our playgrounds have aged um, they, they are in the need of some capital improvements to bring them up to ADA compliance, or quite frankly, some of the, they just need to be re refurbished, right? Because they've really used, uh, they've already come through their uh, useful life, and they need to be upgraded. And some of these uh, parks today, um, you know, there are a lot of them which are in school properties have been funded through PTOs, and so you have a very few amount of people who are funding projects that are really at the benefit of the entire community, not just the school uh, community. So. This, was, this really has the opportunity to be able to do those projects and the scale that needs to get <coughs> done for a larger, broader community. Um, historic preservation. So for there, for quali qualifying historic buildings, you, we could pre be preserving them. There are some asterisks there. Um, it has to be something, uh, a historic building or artifact that is either on the National Register, the State Registrar of Historic Places, uh, or deemed locally significant uh, at this level, um, but it has to be on an inventory that it can be, you know, um, considered a historic artifact. It can't just be, oh yeah, that's historic. That's 1970. It's fine, right? No, the, it has. There are some qualifying pieces there, and uh, there is an inventory that is being proposed, right? That was approved at town <coughs> meeting, I believe it was last year, um, to have this inventory take place. So that's going to be pretty key for helping on the historic building perspective. Uh, historic artifacts, you know, we talked to the uh, Historic District Commission and Historic Society. 
um, there's a lot of opportunity uh, with the artifacts that are already collected in Shrewsbury and just making those artifacts available to the public, either restoring them, showcasing them, et cetera, or making sure that they survive uh, for centuries to come. Um, affordable housing. So here's an area where, you know, we, we talked to the um, housing authority yesterday and, you know, we hear, you know, obviously there's a need for additional local um, affordable housing. Um, and, you know, we're below that 10% range of, you know, meeting our obligations. Here's an opportunity with funding to create additional space, right? Another crucial uh, affordable housing space. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be construction of new buildings. There are opportunities here to uh, convert existing properties to make them affordable housing, or quite frankly, extending existing ones if something was, were at an ex uh, about to expire from being SHI compliant, this could be funding to keep that property in that, in that inventory. So a lot of opportunity with, with CPA. Oh, all right. Um, I uh, happen to have been part of the Northboro Historical Society uh, when they decided to uh, uh, have their building refurbished under the CPA. It was an interesting experience. Um, you Excuse had to present me, a document. Your name is? I'm, my name is Melanie McGee. Okay. Uh, I'm a town meeting member. I'm on the trails committee. Uh, I also um, happen to have some interest in Northboro because I have friends there. So I was okay. a member of that historical society. Sorry, I just didn't know who you were. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I've been around 40 years. I'm, you know, I just don't. That young. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not in, that's not how old I am. That's how long I've been in town. <laughs> um, but thank you. <laughs> Um, anyway, so Northboro, uh, has, I, I know a lot of the people there, and I know a lot of the projects. So, um, open space. They built a common, uh, which, you know, is kind of unheard of. It's like, you know, normally a common is something where you the cows grazed 200 years ago. They did it from scratch. They found a place right in the center of town, which was perfect. Um, there was a building that had to be gotten rid of. It, it had no value. They got rid of it. Um, it all worked out uh, $480,000, and well worth it. It just gives the town a center, um, beautiful job, and it's, um, I, I suspect that it's probably in the first stage. It looks complete, but I imagine it will develop and evolve, and there'll be other features to it, uh, you know, even just planting more trees and so on. Um, okay, uh, Peasley Elementary School playground. I have not been on this playground, but um, I know that there are a lot of nice playgrounds in that, in that town, and uh, they have done very well with them. Uh, $75,000, very nice, and I'm sure their PTOs were delighted to have that happen. Uh, historic preservation. Uh, there were a couple of places, well, there's, I see it mentions White Cliffs here. Uh, White Cliffs, I don't know if anybody's familiar with this building, it's just a beautiful building. Uh, it would be a tragedy to have that go. Uh, they just don't make them like that anymore. Um, they're not a lot of money to refurbish it. Um, Yes, I, I, I know that, uh, you know, there's a certain amount of maintenance that has to be done. However, um, I think that if it were, had been allowed to be demolished, uh, it would have been deeply regretted. Like I say, they just don't make them like that anymore. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, you may find that they find some brilliant use to it. I, 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 they're pretty clever. I think they probably will. So. It's been a while. And the affordable housing. Um, they took... Uh, a, an old building, a historic building, more or less, on the uh, on Main Street, and it looks the same from the outside. It's the one with the four big pillars opposite the library, more or less, mm. um, and that is now four units of affordable housing, uh, in in conjunction with Habitat for Humanity. Um, they also had a, a couple of units that was their old senior center when they built a new senior center that is just behind Trinity Church there, and that is now four units of housing. So uh, this isn't something that you can do overnight. Uh, they have found that they can, uh, you know, put a down payment down and then maybe, like with White Cliffs, there's a bond involved in those so they can, uh, they have a guaranteed source of income so that their, the, the bond can be you know, paid on year, year after year. And uh, it seems to work out quite well for them. So that's my insights into Northboro. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You know, so, I mean, you know, to the point of what uh, Melanie was bringing up about the uh, the projects where they were taking historic buildings and convert them to, to affordable housing. I mean, that the way I look at that is is a two for one special, right? You really are being able to protect historic buildings, which the community finds uh, as they you know they feel that it's important to them, they want to keep it. But there's no you know the think about 
even our own community where any historic buildings, uh, you, perhaps you had a, uh, the owner who no longer needs a 3,000 or 4,000 square foot residence, but they just don't know what to do with it, right? So the town could buy it through CPA funds, refurbish it, create affordable housing, and add to your SHI, you know, your housing stock, right? So that really has an opportunity to, to really do uh, two things for our community. Um, all right, moving on to, uh, to Grafton. Um, so just highlighting two other, two other towns. Grafton um, here, they purchased more open space for 475000 They made improvements to their beach property. Um, so, of course, we have Lake Wissigamond. So you can think about properties or parks that, are, uh, that would be in needing of an additional sand, adding grills, a canopy, um, improve handicap accessibility. You know, those are things that Grafton decided that that was important to them. Think about what it's important in our community, right? and what CPA funds could do for that. Um, historic Reservation, Grafton uh, did an inventory, right? We have free to pay for it here, but, um, you know, I, and I believe, I could, could be wrong, but I think our inventory is on looking at building properties. Uh, for Grafton, uh, they decide to also look at their cultural resources, and they could also be funding artifacts as well within that community. Uh, there, they used a combination of CPA funds and a grant uh, to make that project uh, worth it. Oh, and since I'm a data guy, I love the fact that they decided to put it on GIS. So that is also something that you can be thinking about is how do you share this information with the community, not just keep it in, you know, binder, right? <laughs> um, all right, moving on. So Holliston, uh, another community nearby, similar stories, uh, but here, which wanted to call out, um, they already have some open space. Um, their um, conservation area has um, accessibility, but they don't have parking available to it. So it could be, you know, it's just making what you already have accessible to a larger audience, right? Making it so that you have more parking spaces, people can enjoy that space. Or the communities have taken those open, those open spaces and added trails, or maybe even added benching for the trails, or signage, or markers to say if there's any important artifacts in that space. Um, you know, I think of the, the rail trails that are, you know, next door um, in West Boylston. Um, you know, you go past like probably a mile in and you have that old mill that's on the left hand side as you walk deep into it. And there's signage there that is purposeful and tells you the, story, the history, history of that place and what was there. Um, you know, that's something that we could be exposing any historical places within Shrewsbury with this funds. Again, I just want to call out as I, I you know, reiter reiterating that any of the examples that I bring up, that is, those are proposals that could be coming to the CPC, which is that commission that I explained. Um, for, for funding, uh, again, we are looking at just the funding mechanism um, for this ballot question. Okay, any questions so far before I go into the proposal? No, I'm good. All right, so what are we looking for, to propose in Shrewsbury? Uh, the ballot committee is looking for uh, to set up a 1% surcharge. Again, remember the statute allows you up to 3%. We're looking at a conservative 1%, and that's on the uh, real property tax bills. Uh, in the following slide, I'll talk about what the monies look like for that. Um, if approved by a ballot referendum, a community can hold another referendum in the future to adjust the surcharge, whether up or down, exemptions which I'll cover, whether it be add them or to remove them, and lastly, and I know this is important to some members of our community, the ability to revoke adoption after five years of this being on the books. So five years in, we can say, ah, not working for us. Um, but I will say that out of the 176 communities so far, they've either adjusted, added exemptions, zero. Zero have, re have revoked it. So that goes to show you that communities like them and they keep them, right? And I'm hoping that Shrewsbury will be in that category as well. All right, getting on to the monies. So the cost of property tax owners, the, the table you see in front of you, uh, gives you uh, the assessed real, real estate property values. Um, right there in the middle at 478603 is the average single-family property owner uh, based on the FY20 valuations. Um, there is a, a built-in exemption which we're um, proposing, which is $100,000 off the, the value of that home for the purposes of calculating the surcharge. So the average single-family property value um, homeowner would be assessed a $47.21 surcharge for the year. So in other words, on a quarterly basis, that's $12 a quarter. For $12 a quarter, you can be spending, you can be, you could be adding historical preservation 
uh, actually uh, maintaining it. You can be adding open space and recreation. You can be adding affordable housing in our community. Okay. So the exemptions. The point of CPA, one of the tenants, is obviously affordable housing. And the point with CPA was not to have an impact to folks in our community that are most vulnerable, that being a low income property owners and a low to moderate income senior seniors in our community. For that, CPA allows for the exemption of those two populations from the surcharge, 100% exemption. So even if you are a senior that it is a property worth 478, your $47 is now zero. You can still be enjoying the, the benefits of this, of these things that CPA can bring. Now, there is the other exemption, which I alluded to, which is $100,000 off all the other classes for everybody else, residential, commercial, and industrial properties. So I look at this and say, the beauty of the CPA is that if your property value is really low, imagine some, some of the houses in our community are still one bedroom, one bath, tiny house by the lake. Those property owners maybe have been there for decades, very, de you know, since, since that cottage was, you know, put together, right? We don't want to impact them. So if they don't already have the ex exclusion for their income base, right? A $200,000 property is only charged $12 for the year. Okay. So the scale here is really helping the folks at the low end here. So the, the point I'm pointing here is that the lowest value properties are impacted the least, if at all. Okay. Now, the, what qualifies as a low income property owner or a low to moderate income senior there's a rate table published by HUD, so there's, there's no guesswork there. It's made available, it's, it's online. I can go into the details if you like, but it is available. Okay. All right, any questions on this? No. Thank you. All right, so what is that looking to generate? Um, again, remember I mentioned at the beginning, there's the local surcharge that we'll be generating. There's the variable match in the state and together, those two pieces of, of money come together to form the amount that is allocated for allocate or spend for projects um, in town uh, funded by CPA. A 1% surcharge is estimated to generate over $500,000 annually. And so we talked about those projects earlier. White Cliffs was at like $2.4 million. Some renovations of playgrounds at $75,000. For $500,000, you can do a lot of good in this community for those categories that are really hard to fund. Again, it's be, you'd be hard pressed to find that kind of money in the municipal side of the, of the budget, right? Because often the argument would be is, we don't want to divert money away from funding teachers or a, you know, renovating a, a, a building, funding for police cars, when we could be, you know, you know, we could be doing those other things. Now those are important things in our community. But the, the beauty of CPA is it allows us to have our cake and eat it too. We can have the funding sources to allow for these projects to, to be had in our community because this is important to our community as well, beyond those other core services. And you know, we will bring it to the we're hoping to bring it to the ballot, you know, to ballot and let the Shrewsbury voters decide, do they also feel like we do that this is important in our community? Along with that $500,000, uh, the state match, had we actually had this in place last year, we would have received a 24% return on the monies that we were raised locally. That comes out to uh, roughly $115,000 from the state for the year. Right? So now if you go back and say, well, how, how much was the year before that? If we had enacted it back in you know, 2000 when this first came out, that's, that would have been a lot of money. Now, some folks would say, Okay, well, how much is that match is always going to be there? And the critics are, are right. When the, when the uh, Community Preservation Act came into, into existence, in the beginning, it was a 100% match from the state. And it, was, it was going 100% for the first six years. But then, you know, a lot of communities say, hey, this is great. I want to get on, on board, too. And so, yes, the, the more communities that came on board, the, the amount that was distributed back went down and down and down. It got to the point last year where enough communities say, hey, you got you to gotta stand up this trust fund because the state fund is not going to be able to be sustainable at this point. So they approached you know, the usual process to get uh, uh, the state budget uh, you know, 
uh, a proposal out there, and so through the you know the Baker and Polito administration, they were able to have an additional funding to stand up the trust fund, and so um, the trust fund is funded through a all the rel um, all the transactions at the registry of deeds. So everybody who's doing house purchases or refinancing, you're you're finished with your mortgage, right? All those transactions, there is a built-in surcharge that you know, for that transaction. But inside that is a amount that goes to fund the CPA. And so the budget process this year, the State House, they decided to increase those fees that were allocated for CPA particularly. So that was done to be able to prop up this the trust fund for a few years to come. So the anticipation is with that increase, they will be at about a 30% uh, return uh, to those communities. Um, there is an asterisk here, and I do want to point out that if if folks in the community did want to, you know, reach a little deeper into pockets for this, if they wanted to go at a 3% surcharge, the, the state does incentivize those communities with additional uh, distributions uh, of funds. So there's a, uh, there's a first round, a second and a third round of distribution. The first round is what we would get if we were at 1%, under 3% community. But if we did 3%, um, you can go all the way up to 100% match should there, if there was funds available to do that. Again, we think that at 1% is, I think, good enough to, to try and let the community decide whether they, you know, they like it and if they, they feel they want to make an adjustment, we'll cross that bridge if and when that, that comes to fruition. Any questions here? No. Okay. okay. So after, after the Community Preservation Act is adopted at the ballot, through town meeting in the ballot box in November, a community preservation committee would need to be established. Um, that would be established through a bylaw that would establish the, the, the structure of this committee. So um, at this juncture, we do not need to get into how is it formed. We just need to be aware that it is there. And obviously, as I'm talking to this uh, board, it's important that, like I mentioned in my opening remarks, that, um, that there's a statutory requirement to have one of each of these, community, of these uh, boards and commissions on the Community Preservation Committee. That's commission, uh, Conservation Commission, Planning Board, Historic Commission, Housing Authority, and Parks and Cemetery. And then there's an optional four additional members that can be added to that committee. Uh, we believe that a lot of communities, since they've adopted nine members, we'd like to see nine members as well. But again, the details of that can be flushed out after November as we you know, decide on the bylaw that creates this. And obviously, that would be deliberated through the usual process of how do you get a committee formed in, in town. Um, that committee would be responsible for reviewing the requests. Now, project requests, again, C CPA was came <coughs> about because the community wanted to come up with projects and propose them. And of course, that is, a, that is available today if, you know, if a member of our community wanted to go before the selectmen or through other boards to say, I have a proposal that is well worth available to them. But because, again, it's hard to fund those projects, it's a tall order to say, hey, can I get $100,000 to preserve this thing when really we have all these other competing demands? So a proposal that goes to CPA through this, C this Community Preservation <coughs> Committee would look at, hey, can, does it fall along with the, with the guidelines of what is fundable along with CPA funds? And if that is of importance and prioritize amongst a a plan about how to review these projects, that will go as a package then to town meeting for their approval, right? Again, separation between a requesting entity and an appro a, a approval of entity. So those, that's how those two, the committee and town meeting work hand in hand with this. Now, there is a requirement to say that all the monies that are raised have to be allocated in those three buckets. For the purpose, I've been talking about how open space and recreation were separate things. But for funding purpose, uh, purposes, um, the act treats that as a whole, as a bucket in itself. So 10% for uh, open space and recreation, 10% for historical preservation, and 10% for affordable housing at a minimum for those three categories. And you have to either allocate it or spend it. So you can be just rolling the money into either a trust that's established in those categories, and obviously as a... As a planning board, you're very familiar with other things, other entities that we have, other trusts. So there be, whether it be an affordable housing trust, whether it be any environmental trust that are especially, especially created for open space. Um, you can think about all those other opportunities at the state level 
whether it be grants, trusts that allow for these um, for these funds to be paired up with those things to create to have a funding mechanism for all of the projects you have in mind uh, to go forward. So the CPC would look at the funding proposals and bring that to town meeting, so they can be saying, "Here's some CPA funds." They could also be collaborating with sort of like yourselves to say, <laughs> how else can you fund this effort? And then make it as a package to tell me and say, this is how we're going to pay for it. So if you, th you know, the a good current proposal, think about the town, the cent town center uh, replanning opportunities, right? Uh, you know, I was, you know, hearing Mr. Cahill talk about uh, micro parks as an opportunity, should that be something that, you know, the community wants to uh, go forward with, how would you pay for the micro parks, right? Here's an opportunity to add recreation or open space, and how do you pay for that, right? So um, it can be small things. It can be large things, like we, we talked about. Um, any any other efforts you want to chime in here? Oh, gee, there are any number of things. Um, I was looking at the uh, um, complete streets document uh, online, uh, and was very interested to see the whole list of, of potential product projects out there. Um, you know, if they don't go through that format, uh, you know, there may be something there that would be perfectly suitable uh, under the CPA. Um, and, you know, you, if you talk to any group in town, I'm sure everybody can come up with a project. Uh, and any town board probably could come up with a project. Um, we all have our own areas of expertise that we know what we want and, and have had trouble find, having uh, funding for. So um, I don't think there will be any shortage of ideas. Yeah, thank you. And, and also to just add on to that, I'm not going to reference that. I'll just reference it. I won't go into it. But I'm holding up here just, and it, what's also referenced in, in your reference material is the master plan. And I create, I uh, extracted some pages from there. So that's available to you. Um, and then also from the housing production plan, which obviously looks very familiar, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> created from uh, the planning uh, side of the house. So, you know, there's, there's already documented need in our community for, all, for those categories. And so this really is an, an opportunity to, to really make these things come to fruition. The community has already spoken through these documents, and I think we have the now funding mechanism if we move forward with this uh, to make those things come to, true, to fruition. So I'll leave that with any questions or? No, I have no questions. I think that it'll be um, interesting to hear town meeting's response to this. I, I, I'm not sure if this is the first time it's been uh, kind of brought forth to town meeting in terms of uh, putting this in place. I know that it's been around for some time, but um, do you have, so you're going to be doing this presentation again at town meeting or a derivative of this? A derivative, yes. Yeah. It will, um, we'll go into more, more elaboration in some areas and less than others, but Yes, we will be having a presentation. If we're, if we're uh, fortunate to go before town meeting to discuss this, and then um, you know, with that approval, then obviously we'd have a lot of work in front of us uh, for a public communication and uh, public buy-in through the, through the summertime into November. Um, I do also want to make a, a point that the public, there will be a public meeting that we've uh, added, uh, will be in the library on March 18th. It's a Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Um, Again, the library. So, the bylaw is not currently constructed. Is that correct? The bylaw that would establish the community preservation committee is not proposed at this time, but it would be something that we would create after November. Would that be the responsibility of the people that are on this um, committee? I would. It it would be, but I would imagine that the ballot committee would be very tuned to make sure this happens as well. So. Um, and do you have an idea, based on your experience already working within one, what is, what is basically a time commitment that somebody on any of these boards should be aware of? There, um, the schedule for um, these projects is a little different than the fiscal year. So um, I believe that, um, uh, Bernie, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think that the money comes in in like November or something. So uh, it's, um, and then they work through the summer basically. Uh, to uh, have the projects lined up and, you know, evaluated and so on. Um, is that what you're asking me? Uh, I, I was thinking, you know, like, so we meet every month. Yes. Would it be something similar to that where it would be a scheduled or is it I don't, once a I don't quarter? Think that, or do you know uh, I don't think the CPC... Okay. 
So the, the CPC, um, some communities have decided that their CPC would, would meet at least minimally one year, um, every year, to, to review projects. But other CPCs have decided to meet more frequently. So uh, it really is up to that CPC to decide how often they'd like to meet to hear these proposals. Um, again, they also do have to go to town meeting to make those, those recommendations and have their approval for that authority. So again, a minimum one year because you also would have to be reporting out to town meeting as part of the budget process, right? All, those, all the town reports to say, here's my annual budget, here's what we did, et cetera. Um, so at least once a year. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, fine. I think it's smart starting out at 1%. Yeah. Thank you. Agreed. Okay. Could you just, Jason, tell the board the next steps after, so what are your next steps between now and town meeting? What are you hoping to do after this? Like, where do you go from here? Sure, sure. Um, well, actually, to date, we've met with uh, many boards and commissions um, and also community, uh, community groups. We're continuing this outreach process, and obviously, as a stakeholder, it was very important that we talked uh, tonight to get your, your input uh, and to be informative about what it is we're proposing. Uh, our next is to go to the Board of Selectmen on February the 25th um, and, and present uh, our same conversation here and additional information and to hear their feedback. Um, obviously, we're hoping that that's a very positive uh, review, uh, but we will take any advance, any, any feedback from that regard and, and adjust accordingly if, if we hear, uh, if, we should, if we need to. Uh, again, we'll also have that public hearing. I should say it's our ballot committee interest in hearing from the public, uh, whether it be from town meeting members, members of other boards and commissions like the finance committee, uh, will be invited to this uh, public meeting to hear from them, their perspectives in advance of town meeting. Um, obviously town meeting will have a formal presentation and there will be the, the, the final opportunity to shape that ballot question. If town meeting does approve that ballot question, that will be advanced to, to the state um, to Put that on the ballot, and then we will be doing our outreach to the broader community. So we're we're closing closing in on the end uh, for this. Obviously, the the selectmen is the is the next uh, the, the biggest piece that we need to get next. Thank you. And that feedback. Um, certainly, I would certainly encourage you that either as a, a board or as individuals that if you like CPA or if you have concerns with CPA to express those reservations or praise for it uh, to move forward with it and express that with the board of selectmen or your town meeting members if you're a resident. Okay. Well, thank you. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? Okay, fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank, you. thank you. I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is a um, common driveway, multi-family development site plan approval and special permit, 257 Main Street. Uh, we have a request for continuance, Mr. Cahill. Uh Yes, we received a request for continuance late yesterday um, to continue to the March meeting, which is March, March 5th. Uh, 5th, yes. March 5th. Does anybody uh, have uh, a problem with can I have a motion, please? I move that we grant the continuance uh, as requested by the applicant for uh, site plan approval and special permit relative to 257 Main Street until uh, Thursday, March 5th, 2020 at 7 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, if you want to pass that to Steve to read out for the... The bond release for new business. The first one is um, discuss and vote on a bond release for 167 169 Memorial Drive, which, if you recall, was the um, storage garage up on Memorial. Okay, uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, uh, it would be a vote to release the, <coughs> re the bond in full. Okay, you're satisfied. Yes, we've received the as built, and it's been approved by my uh, the planning department and engineering. And I move that we uh, authorize the release of the uh, bond uh, for one sixty seven dead through one sixty nine Memorial Drive. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have the next item 
The next item is another um, bond release for 235 Hartford Turnpike, which um, was the uh, marijuana establishment, the botanist. Um, yes, please. Uh, we've received the as built that's been approved by planning and engineering and passed uh, muster. So, okay. All right. Then I move that we uh, authorize the release of the uh, bond for 235 Hartford Turnpike, the applicant being the botanist. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wait a second. You want to wait one second just for everyone to sign? Just make sure everyone signs. Okay. Okay. So the next bit of business is um, new business uh, letter C, which is the request for annual town meeting zoning articles. Um, I gave you the draft in front of you this evening. I've actually, the one modification I've made is the first two articles. It was originally for five, uh, combined the first two, so now there's only four. Um, these are all articles related to the establishment of the um, town center zoning district. Mm -hmm. So article one is, um, I don't know if you want me to go through these, Mr. Chairman. Sure, or, sure um, to amend section two for definitions, um, establishment of districts, uh, including district intent and the modifications, obviously, to the uh, the use table with those new definitions. Um, again, this is to create new definitions for the town center and then also to amend the use table to um, put in the, the town center district in one of the columns as we have on the use table and then to go through, in addition to the new uses, which will have to be modified for every zoning district, but also for this one, um, and to go through and categorize that. Um, the second article is to, um, let's see, that is to change, or I should say insert the town zoning district, the language throughout the zoning bylaw where um, we deal with things like parking, um, parking standards, uh, signage standards, um, area frontage requirements, um, and to provide a space for the town center zoning district. Um, most of the time in those cases, there are just references to see the new section which is being proposed um, rather than anything too fancy. So when it says parking, it'll say parking standards will be um, dealt with under section, the new section uh, for the town center zoning district. So it's just putting within the, con in the uh, what's the word, the, the text of the, z the zoning, the general zoning text, uh, where to look for for this. So that town center zoning district shows up just like all the other districts do in town for um, when you're looking for a standard for something. Um, and then uh, the third article would actually be to create then that subsection in the zoning bylaws, which would control all the things that happen in the um, town center zoning district, such as design standards, signage standards, um, frontage requirements, those types of things, um, dimensional requirements, parking standards, and the like, um, which you will be seeing shortly, um, as I'll explain. And then the final article, as we always do with the zoning map change, requires its own individual article. So that one would be um, adjusting the zoning boundaries. Um, so um, I will be presenting, uh, excuse me, on uh, February 11th, next Tuesday, to the Board of Selectmen. I'll be making a presentation, kind of an update about where things stand with a lot of excerpts out of what we've come up with so far. So it won't be the full-blown text. <laughs> that would take probably a long time. Um, we will get to that at some point, but next Tuesday they've just asked me to provide an update again with some excerpts, some language, some idea of, you know, so the board and the public can kind of see where we're at at this stage. And then it will be coming back to us and the planning board, you the board. I'm hoping next March we can kind of maybe do a working meeting during, um, so not some, a public meeting more than a public hearing because we'll do our public hearings in uh, April and May, but to get the text out to at that point. So this board and selectmen within the next four weeks will be receiving the, I don't wanna say final text, but the final, the latest draft, <laughs> completed draft of the zoning bylaw to, to start reviewing so we can really sink our teeth into it. And I'm excited to get all of your feedback from this. I think it's it's really exciting where it's, it's 
it's a, it's a great opportunity for Shrewsbury, and we've made a lot of progress. So we're, we're nearly there, but this is just, so this letter is just the request for those town meeting articles, and just like any other article we've done in the past, Board of Selectmen will send a letter back saying, please go ahead and perform your public hearings on it. Um, so that's where we're at. And then um, I would just like a vote um, for the four articles to be sent to Board of Selectmen. So if we don't have them, how are we going to vote them? Well, he's only we're only voting to have him have bring these, these forward in front of the board of selectmen. Not the, the we're not voting on the language or anything. That well, I, I understand, but usually we don't do this, right? Usually. No, we usually do. Do we? Yep. This has been standard practice. We've done this the last three and a half years I've been here. Okay. So we typically, if the language isn't exactly written, we will send a, a summary of what's being changed. Um, and the board, the board of selectmen will also approve this and send this back, okay. and then they'll get a second chance to see it, anyways. And so will everyone else. So it's. All right, then I move that we uh, authorize the uh, Mr. Kale to. Uh, I, what do you say? Start working on or. Uh, uh, no. Um, to uh, to request move. articles. To request so you're not article. asking me. So you would vote. So we'd make a motion to uh, request these articles. Um, this request be sent to the Board of Selectmen for these articles. All right, did I move that uh, we request that the five uh, articles relative to the town center be sent to the zoning articles for the town center be sent to the Board of Selectmen? Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't remember this. All right. That's okay. And then finally we have um, section, sorry, new business letter D which um, here's your summary, Steve, um, for technical review fees for projects that have been completed quite a few years ago. Most of these are from 2015. Okay. Um, it, I would deal with them the same way you read off the um, okay. paying the bills. All right, so I have a list here of technical review fees. Uh, we'll start with um, Shrewsbury Partners, LLC, for 579 Lake Street soil testing, $114.80. RIFL Realty LLC, 167 175 Memorial Drive Soil Testing, $15.10. Patrick Motors Mart Incorporated, 3 Elm Street Soil Testing, $85.60. ESC Companies Incorporated, 315 Hartford Turnpike UPS Soil Testing, $15.10. Shrewsbury Maple LLC, 378 Maple Ave Fairlawn Site Plan Modification, $10,799.75. Capital Group Properties, 258 to 274 Walnut Street, soil testing, $82.60. Hartford Turnpike LLC, 697 Hartford Turnpike Gymnastic Office, $3,328.70. Capital Group Properties, 258 to 274 Walnut Street, assisted living office building, $2,420.66. And Jody K. Utter, 204 Main Street, Behavioral Services, $1,982.25, totaling $18,844.56. I have a motion. I move to approve. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, that is being signed. Finally, old business. This is the final version of the environmental impact review for Edgemere Crossing at Flint Pond. I did not print it up. It's um, several hundred pages, so it is on the drive. Uh, it was been on there for about a week to review. Um, if you do have any questions or concerns, the next few days, working days, is uh, the time to send it to me um, or to mention anything tonight that you saw in the report. Um, there is an executive, executive summary, so you don't have to read all. I think it's a thousand pages altogether if you go by the appendices. So um, I wasn't going to print it out, but so that's that. Otherwise, um, we're all set. We have CQ. <laughs> a few letters of correspondence. Um, it's just from um, the clerk for letters of no appeals for several projects, but otherwise, that's it. All right. I move that we conclude this evening's public hearings. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much.